the very most fun I've ever found, and you're my friend. Hi, this is Cricket talking to you. Welcome to Cricket's Clubhouse. This meeting will now come to order. <laughs> that means let's start having fun right away. We're going to sing songs and play games and hear some stories, too. Now that you're an official member of Cricket's Clubhouse, are we going to have a swell time or what? Meet me at the clubhouse, down at Cricket's Clubhouse. Meet me at the clubhouse, right away. We'll be singing and laughing. Anything can happen. Let's hear it for the clubhouse. Hip, hip, hooray. of a club wear the same kind of hat or badge, and sometimes they even have a special handshake. At Cricket's Clubhouse, we've got a special way of saying hello. I'll sing a song that tells you how to do it, and you can practice. First, clap your hands above your head, then clap your hands down by your knees, then blink your eyes three times and wave hello. <laughs> Ready? Here goes. Clap your hands up high, clap your hands down low, blink your eyes three times, and you wave hello. That's the official way we greet when we see each other on the street. Clap your hands up high, clap your hands down low, blink your eyes three times, and you wave hello. That's what the clubhouse members do, and since you're one, you can do it too. Now that you've practiced till you're really good, can you show me how you do it? I wish you would. Clap your hands up high, clap your hands down low, blink your eyes three times and you wave hello. That's the Cricket Clubhouse way to say good to see you. How you doing today? Clap your hands up high, clap your hands down low, blink your eyes three times and you wave hello. That's what the clubhouse members do. And since you're one, you can do it too. At the very first meeting of Cricket's Clubhouse, I said to my friends Cindy Lou and Jonathan, now that we have a club, we have to have a password. What's a password, said Jonathan? It's like a secret code, I said. It's something you say that only the other people in the club know about. So Cindy Lou and Jonathan and I thought and thought. How about asparagus, said Jonathan, and we all laughed. How about jelly belly, said Cindy Lou, and we all laughed some more. And then I said, how about supercalifragilistic? And we all laughed so hard, we could hardly stop. And when we finally did, I said, are we having fun or what? Hey, said Cindy Lou, that'd make a great password. Are we having fun or what? Oh, boy, said Jonathan. Nobody's ever going to guess our password. <laughs> and then we all laughed. Here's a song we like to sing at Cricket's Clubhouse. It's about a lot of fast animals and one slow one. Let's have some fun. Here's all you got to do. When I name an animal, you do what he does. If he's fast, you go fast. If he's slow, you go slow. Ready? Let's do it. Squirrels are racing over the ground. Squirrels are jumping up and down. They're so quick. They're so fast. Squirrels, squirrels racing past. Mice are running over the ground. Mice are jumping up and down. They're so quick. They're so fast. Mice, mice running past. But the turtle.
fun game to play that'll get you going up and down. Whenever I say the word tall, you stand up, stretch your arms over your head, and be as tall as you can. Stay there, and when I say the word short, you scrunch down and make yourself as little as you can. Okay? Let's do it! Once upon a time, there was a tall giant who lived next door to a short elf. One day, the tall giant said, I wish I was short, like you, Mr. Elf. And the elf said, I wish I was tall, like you, Mr. Giant. No, no, said the giant. Short is better. I'm so tall, I'm always bumping my head. But the short elf said, no, no, tall is better. People are always calling me shorty. It's terrible. And so this tall tale came to an end shortly thereafter. Here's a story about some little mice who had a clubhouse in my kitchen and about Oliver the kitchen cat. Every afternoon at four o'clock, all the little mice came from all over the house to have their mouse club meeting. They played games and told stories, and then they had the most delicious refreshments, cookies and hot chocolate. There was only one problem. Every now and then, Oliver the kitchen cat would come zooming in just when the little mice were sitting down to eat. Oh no, everyone would shout. It's Oliver. Run, run. But Oliver wasn't a mean cat. He just wanted to play. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, Oliver would say. I just love playing tag with the little mousies. And he'd zoom all around the kitchen trying to tag as many little mice as he could. Fortunately for the little mice, they were always faster than Oliver. Then one afternoon, the oldest of the little mice got up to speak. His name was Horatio. This has gone far enough, said Horatio. Sooner or later, Oliver is going to catch one of us. And then where will we be? I have an idea, said Eugene. Why don't we put a bell around Oliver's neck? That way, he can't take us by surprise anymore. Excellent idea, said Horatio. Eugene, we wish you the best of luck. But, said Eugene, why do I have to do it? Because you're the newest member of our club, said Horatio. And besides, it was your idea. So all the other little mice hurried home and left Eugene all alone in the kitchen, waiting for Oliver. How do I get myself into this mess, said Eugene to himself. Maybe I should just resign from the club and leave town instead. Well, pretty soon, who do you think came zooming into the kitchen? You guessed it, Oliver, the kitchen cat. And was he ready for a fun game of tag or what? But Oliver didn't see any little mousy, except for one, and that was Eugene. So, hello, Oliver, said Eugene. Hello there, said Oliver. Where is everybody? Well, you know, said Eugene, you know how you're always trying to play tag with us little mice? Sure, said Oliver. I just love playing tag with little mousy. Yes, well, we know that, Oliver. And, and before Eugene could stop himself, he said, and that's why we've all decided to ask you to join our club. Me, said Oliver. Join the mousies club? How wonderful. I'm glad you think so, said Eugene. But there's just one thing. You have to wear this spell. Why, I'd be happy to, said Oliver. You would, said Eugene. I mean, that's great. So Oliver put the little bell around his neck and Eugene tied the red ribbon in a big bow. The next afternoon, all the other little mice asked Eugene, did you do it? Did you get Oliver to put the bell on? Sure did, said Eugene. And then they all heard the ting-a-ling of Oliver's bell. Here he comes now, everybody said. Here comes Oliver. Run, run. But to everyone's surprise, Oliver didn't come zooming into the kitchen like he usually did. Instead, he strolled in, sat down on the floor, and said, Hiya, little mousies. Where's my hot chocolate? And then Horatio stood up and said, Eugene, what is the meaning of this? So Eugene explained to everyone that Oliver was the newest member of the mouse club. But we can't have a cat in a club for mice, said Horatio. Why not, said Eugene. Well, well, said Horatio, I don't know why not. That's settled.
little Ben said to Jean, Oliver, have a cookie. So Oliver began coming to the mouse club every day. And pretty soon, he liked having cookies and hot chocolate so much, he didn't miss playing tag with the little mousies at all. One time, my friends Susan and Jonathan and I decided to open a lemonade stand. We needed some money for our club treasury. So we all went to work right away. I made tons of lemonade. Susan set up her table in front of my house, and Jonathan put up a sign. My mom lent us some money so we could give people change when they bought our lemonade. How much money did your mom lend us, said Jonathan. I think a dollar, I said, but we better count it to make sure. So Susan and Jonathan and I counted all the change my mom lent me, and we sang a song to help us count. Five pennies make a nickel, two nickels make a dime, two dimes and a nickel make a quarter every time, four quarters make a dollar, and that is quite a lot, and a dollar is exactly how much money we have got. So then we were all ready for business. Only problem was, nobody came along to buy our lemonade. Then all of a sudden, Jonathan said, Look, here comes Mr. Carlson, the mealman. I'll bet he'll buy some lemonade. And sure enough, Mr. Carlson was so hot and thirsty, he drank two glasses of lemonade. But when he wanted to pay us, we said, That's all right, Mr. Carlson. You don't have to pay. You'll bring us our mail every day. After Mr. Carlson left, my little brother came out of the house and said, Cricket. Can I have a glass of lemonade? Do you have 25 cents, I said. I don't have any money, said my little brother. Oh, that's all right, I said. You can have a glass anyway. Well, my brother was so thirsty. First he drank one, and then two, and then three glasses of lemonade. Then pretty soon my dad came home from work, and boy, did he look hot and tired and thirsty. Want some lemonade, Dad, I said. Sure, he said. That sounds great. But I bet you'll never guess what happened then. When I started to pour him a glass, there wasn't enough lemonade left to fill it up. Sorry, Dad, I said. Looks like we ran out. That's all right, he said. I'll go inside and get something to drink. Well, guys, I said to Susan and Jonathan, I guess our lemonade stand is closed till tomorrow. So Jonathan took down his sign, and Susan folded up her table, and I took all the empty glasses into the house. Did you make lots of money for your club treasury, my mom said? We didn't make any money. And then I told her what happened with my dad and my little brother and Mr. Carlson, the mailman. My mom laughed and laughed. And then she said, Cricket, you all worked so hard. Why don't you keep the money I lent you? just to get your treasury started. Gee, Mom, I said, thanks a lot. So I went back outside to tell Susan and Jonathan, and they said, let's count the money in our treasury one more time. And so we did. Five pennies make a nickel, two nickels make a dime. Two dimes and a nickel make a quarter every time. Four quarters make a dollar, and that is quite a lot. And a dollar is exactly how much money we have got. Well, we finally did make some money for our treasury. But then we had to decide what to spend it on. And that wasn't easy. I knew a jump rope rhyme about a little girl who had a lot of trouble trying to spend a nickel. If you've got a jump rope, you can jump along. If you haven't got a jump rope, <laughs> you can jump without one. Here we go. Little Susie got a nickel, and she went to buy a pickle. The pickle was sour, so she went to buy a flower. The flower didn't smell, so she went to buy a bell. The bell wouldn't ring, so she went to buy some string. The string wouldn't whine, so she tried another kind. It wasn't any better, so she went to buy a feather. The feather wouldn't tickle, so she finally bought a pickle. And that was the end of Little Susie's nickel. Here's a rhyming game that's fun to play. Day and way are rhyming words, so are light and night. Now here's how we play the game. I'll say a nursery rhyme, 
but I'm going to leave out the rhyming word. See if you can tell me what it is. Here's the first one. One, two, buckle my... Did you say shoe? Shoe rhymes with two. Let's keep going. Three, four, shut the... Door. Shut the door. Door rhymes with four. There's more. Five, six, pick up. The answer is six. Six rhymes with six. We're not finished yet. Seven, eight, shut the... Did you say gate? Gate rhymes with eight. And now here's a different rhyme. It's one of my favorites. Roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet, and so are... And so are you. My little brother wanted to join Cricket's Clubhouse for the longest time. Well, one day, we finally let him, and I'm going to tell you how it happened. Once when our club was having a meeting, Cindy Lou said, Hey, you know what would be fun? Let's put on a play. That's a great idea, I said. How about...